24 hours of the Passion, 4 p.m. hour, Jesus' burial and his blessed mother's sorrow. Preparation before each hour. O oh my Lord Jesus Christ, prostrate in your divine presence, I implore your most loving heart to admit me to the sorrowful meditation of the 24 hours in which, for love of us, you wanted to suffer so much in your adorable body and in your most holy soul unto death on the cross. O oh, please, give me help, grace, love, deep compassion and understanding of your sufferings as I now meditate this hour. And for those which I cannot meditate, I offer you my, my will to meditate them, and I willingly intend to meditate them in all the hours in which I have to apply myself to my duties or sleep. Accept, O oh merciful Lord, my loving intention, and let it be beneficial for me and for all, as if I effectively and in a saintly way accomplished what I wish to practice. Meanwhile, I give you thanks, O oh my Jesus, for calling me to union with you by means of prayer. And to please you more, I take your thoughts your tongue, your heart, and with this I intend to pray, fusing all of myself in your will and in your love, and stretching out my arms to hug you, I place my head on your heart, and I begin. My Sorrowful Mother I see that you dispose yourself for the final sacrifice of having to bury the lifeless body of your son Jesus. Perfectly resigned to the will of God, you accompany him and place him in the scapular with your own hands. You reverently arrange his arms and legs and as you go about to offer him your last goodbye and last kiss, the sorrow you experience is so intense that you feel your heart torn from your bosom. Love nails you to those arms and legs. By virtue of your love and sorrow, your life is about to expire, just like that of your lifeless son. Poor mother, how shall you go on without Jesus? He is your life and your all. And yet, it is the will of the Eternal One that wants it so. You are caught between two insurmountable powers, love and the Divine Will. Love nails you in such a way that you cannot detach yourself from Jesus. The Divine Will imposes itself by asking of you this sacrifice. Poor Mother, how shall you go on? I unite myself to your sorrows. Oh, please, angels of heaven, come to raise Mary from the stiffened limbs of Jesus, otherwise she will die. But what a surprise! While Mary seems to have died along with Jesus, I now hear her voice trembling and interrupted with sobs, saying, Oh, son, O oh, beloved son, I will now be deprived of the only comfort I had that assuaged my sorrows, your most sacred humanity, over which I might pour myself out in adoring and kissing your wounds. Now this too is taken from me, and the divine will decrees it thus, and to this most holy will I resign myself. But I wish you to know, my son, 
that although your most sacred humanity will now be taken from me, I long to adore it. The mere thought of having to separate myself from you robs me of my strength and my life. O oh, son, as I make this sorrowful separation, please increase in me your divine strength and life, allow me to remain completely immersed in your death and burial, to possess the continuation of your life on earth, along with your sorrows, reparations and all that you possess. Oh, only an exchange of our lives will grant me such divine strength to offer up this sacrifice of detaching myself from you. My afflicted mother, I see you with complete resolve again reverently pass over Jesus' limbs. You place your head upon his and kissing it, infuse your thoughts within his thoughts, assimilating yourself with his thorns caused by the afflicted and offensive thoughts of others and with everything he suffered in his most sacred head. Oh, how you long to restore Jesus' thoughts with your own thoughts and give your life for his. Infusing yourself in Jesus' thoughts and thorns, you begin to revive. Sorrowful mother, I see you kiss the lifeless eyes of Jesus. I am crushed to see that Jesus no longer looks at you. How many times his gazes filled you with heavenly joys and restored you from life to death but now not having him gaze upon you makes you suffer the pangs of death so you fuse your eyes in his eyes assimilating yourself with them you unite yourself with his tears and with the bitterness of the many insults scorns and offenses he received from others. But I see, my pierced mother, that you kiss the most sacred ears and you entreat him over and over again, saying, My son, how can it be that no longer you hear my voice? You, who were attentive to my every sigh, and here I am weeping, and calling out to you. Can you hear me? Oh, love is the cruelest tyrant. You meant more to me than my own life, and now I must endure life without you in such sorrow. Oh, son, I fuse my ears in yours to take upon myself what love compelled you to endure in your most sacred ears, especially the echo of the offences that resounded in them, as only the taking upon myself of your pains and your sorrows will sustain my life. And, as you say this, the sorrow that grips your heart is so intense that it leaves you speechless and motionless. My poor mother, my poor mother, I unite myself to your immense sorrow. How many bitter deaths you undergo. But the divine will, with its power, enables you to again move. And you look at his most sacred face. You kiss it and exclaim, Adorable son, how disfigured you are. You are so unrecognizable that if love did not move me to recognize you as my son, my life and my all, I would no longer recognize you. Your beauty has been transformed into deformity. Your cheeks are swollen with wells. O oh, beloved son, the radiance and gracefulness of your face, so enrapturing that all who beheld you were beautified 
has assumed the power of death. My son, they have reduced you to such a sorrowful state. Sin has so horribly disfigured your most sacred limbs. Oh, what would I, your inseparable mother, not give to restore to you your heavenly beauty? I fuse my face in yours, my son, and take upon myself the slaps, the spittle, the scorns, and everything you endured in your most sacred face. Oh, son, if you want me to live, then grant me your sufferings, otherwise I shall die. Your sorrow is so great that it constricts your throat and stifles your voice, and you remain as though lifeless, pressed against the face of Jesus. Poor mother, I unite myself to your sorrow. Angels of mine, come and comfort my mother. Her sorrow is great and so overwhelming that it leaves her speechless without any strength or life. And the divine will, shattering through these waves of her sorrow, restores her to life. You now approach the mouth of Jesus and, kissing it, you feel your lips so embittered by the gall that so intensely embittered his mouth that you suddenly utter, My son, share one last word with your mother. Can it be that I will no longer hear your voice? All the loving and sorrowful words you shared with me in life were like many arrows wounding my heart with both love and sorrow. Now, seeing you speechless renews these arrows in my sorrowful heart. Oh, these arrows cause me so many deaths that they cry out to you for one last word. But since you do not speak, they wound me more and say to me, He created in your soul as many heavens as there are words he spoke. You shall no longer hear his voice, nor enjoy the sweet accents and melodies of his creative word. Oh, my paradise on earth is finished as I shall henceforth experience only bitterness. O oh, son, I want to impart to you my tongue to revive your speech. Please renew in me all that which you suffered in your most sacred mouth, the bitter gall, the ardent thirst of your parched mouth, your reparations and your prayers. By virtue of these voices of your sufferings renewed in me, my sorrow will be more tolerable, and I, your mother, though through your sufferings, will be able to go on living. Sorrowful mother, I see that those who surround you want to close the sepulcher, so you hasten your step. You quickly take Jesus' hands between yours and kiss them. You press them to your heart, and fusing your hands in his, Fusing yourself in the very pains and wounds of his most sacred hands, you then pass over Jesus' feet, looking at the cruel furrows the nails have created. As you fuse your feet in Jesus' feet, you fuse yourself in their furrows and run. In Jesus' place, with his feet, after sinful souls, to snatch them from hell. O oh, grieving mother, I now see you give the last goodbye to Jesus' pierced heart. Here you pause, as it is the last blow of your sorrow your motherly heart will here receive. On account of your immense love and sorrow, you feel your heart torn from your bosom. Of its own accord your heart makes its flight and immerses itself in the most sacred heart of Jesus. In seeing that you no longer possess your own heart, you hasten to take possession of it from within Jesus. 
O Sacred Heart. You also take possession of Jesus' love that has been rejected by many souls and of his ardent desires that remain unfulfilled in the souls on account of their ingratitude. Indeed, the sorrows and sufferings of your son's most sacred heart will keep you crucified with him for the rest of your life. You look at the gaping wound of his heart and kiss it. You pass over it gently with your tongue, reverencing its precious blood. And feeling from this act the life of Jesus infused in you and acquire the divine strength to fulfill your bitter separation. Then you embrace him and allow the separate stone to close him in. My sorrowful mother, as I weep, I entreat you not to allow Jesus to be taken from our sight. Let me first enclose myself in him, so as to make his life my own. If you, who are immaculate, all holy and full of grace, cannot live without Jesus, how much less can I, who am weak, wretched and full of sins? How can I live without Jesus? Sorrowful Mother, do not leave me alone. But take me with you, just as you fused yourself in Jesus, so fuse my entire being in him and empty me of everything so that Jesus' entire being may be fused in me. Avail yourself of the maternal office with which Jesus entrusted you from the cross. With your motherly heart, raise me up from my extreme unworthiness and with your own hands enclose my entire being in Jesus. Enclose in my mind Jesus' thoughts so that no other thoughts may enter me. Enclose in my eyes Jesus' eyes so that he may never escape my gaze. Enclose in my ears Jesus' ears so that I may always listen to him and do his most holy will in all things. Enclose my face in Jesus' face, so that in looking at him, so disfigured for love of me, I may love him. Unite myself to his passion and offer him reparation. Enclose in my tongue Jesus' tongue, so that I may speak, pray and teach with Jesus' tongue. Close in my hands, Jesus' hands, so that each movement I make and each walk I perform may derive their merit and life from Jesus' own works and acts. Enclose in my feet, Jesus' feet, so that each one of my steps may infuse in other souls strength and zeal and dispose them for the life of eternal salvation. And now, my sorrowful mother, allow me to kiss Jesus' heart and to pass over it gently with my tongue, reverencing its precious blood. May you enclose his heart in mine so that I may live by his love, his desires and his sorrows. Lastly, extend to me Jesus' stiffened right hand so that he may the impart to me his final blessing. The stone closes the sepulchre. In your sorrow you kiss it and crying give him your last goodbye and you depart. But the sorrow is so great that you remain frozen and motionless for a while. My sorrowful mother, would you I offer Jesus my goodbye and crying, I remain at your side to offer you a word of comfort and a compassionate gaze for your every sigh, grief and sorrow. I will gather your tears and if I see that you are about to faint, I will hold 
you in my arms. But I see you are forced to return to Jerusalem along the path from which you came. After only a few steps, you find yourself once again before the cross on which Jesus suffered so much and died. You run to embrace it and, in seeing it covered with his blood, there are renewed in your heart each and every one of the sufferings he endured on it. Unable to contain your sorrow, you exclaim. Cross, how could you be so cruel to my son? Oh, you have spared him nothing. What wrong has he done to you? You did not let his sorrowful mother give him so much as one sip of water when he had asked. To his parched mouth you offered gall and vinegar. I felt my sorrowful heart bleed as I longed to offer to his lips the love of my heart. But I received and said the sorrow of seeing myself rejected. O cross, you are indeed cruel and yet holy, for by your contact with my son you have become divinized and sanctified. May the cruelty you have shown him be changed into compassion for sinful mankind. For the sake of the sorrows, he endured on you, may the sufferings you impart to souls, infuse in them grace and strength, so that through the very tribulations and crosses they experience, all may be saved and no one may be lost. Souls cost me so much. They cost me the life of my divine son, and as co-redemptrix and mother, I bind them to you, O cross. And after kissing the cross over and over again, you leave. Poor mother, I unite myself with your sorrow. At each step you take, memories and new sorrows arise in you that increase in intensity and bitterness. They inundate and overwhelm you and you feel a new death with each passing moment. You are now at the place where you met Jesus this morning, where you saw him exhausted under the enormous weight of his cross, with blood streaming down him, and on his head a bundled array of thorns, which, banging against the cross, penetrated into his head deeper and deeper, giving him the pains of death with each blow. Jesus looked into your eyes, and as you gazed at each other, you looked upon one another with compassion. And the soldiers, not allowing you the comfort of meeting each other, shoved him and made him fall, thereby forcing him to shed new blood. You see the ground soaked with his blood, and to reverence it, You immediately lower yourself to the ground and, as you kiss his blood, I hear you say, Come, my angels, and watch over this blood. Do not allow one drop of this blood to be trampled on or profaned. Sorrowful mother, allow me to give you my hand to help you up as I see you faint over the blood of Jesus. As you stand and continue to walk, you discover everywhere traces of Jesus' blood, and you recall his sorrows, whereby you hasten your step and arrive at the cenacle, where you enclose yourself. I, I too enclose myself in the cenacle, the cenacle of the most sacred heart of Jesus, and I approach you to keep you company in this hour of bitter, desolation. My heart cannot bear to leave you alone in so much sorrow. But what a harrowing blow my heart receives in seeing Jesus' thorns 
that you have taken upon yourself penetrating your head with each graceful movement your head makes. The piercings of all our sins of thought penetrate into your very eyes, making you shed tears of blood. As you weep blood, you bear Jesus' vision in your eyes, whereby you behold all the sins of mankind. Oh, how they embitter you, since you bear all of Jesus' sorrows in your heart. You keenly understand all that which Jesus had suffered. And one pain is followed by another as you attune your ears. The echo of the voices of sinful souls deafens you. Each offence and discordant voice reaches your heart and pierces it. And you say, Son, how much you have suffered. O oh, sorrowful mother, I unite myself with you in your bitter sorrow. Allow me to dry your face wet with tears of blood. But I shudder in seeing your blessed face now, united to Jesus' face, covered with wealth, unrecognisable and pale, with a deathly pallor. I realise that your appearance is the result of having taken upon yourself the offences directed against Jesus. You experience his suffering so keenly that as you move your lips in prayer and emit sighs within your inflamed bosom, you feel your lips parched with Jesus' thirst and your breath embittered with his embittered breath. Sorrowful Mother, I unite myself with you in your sorrow as your sorrows continue to increase. As I take your hands in mine, I see them pierced with nails. I immediately realise that it is in your hands that you feel all the sorrow, mother, betrayal, sacrileges and evil works that Jesus had taken upon himself, but that are now repeated in you with the same blows inflicted upon him, thereby widening Jesus' wounds, we lived in you and embittering them more and more. I completely unite myself in your sorrow. You are the true crucified mother. Why, not even your feet are spared Jesus' nails. What is more, not only do you feel these nails piercing your feet, but they are rent open from the many iniquitous steps of souls who are going to hell. And you run after them so that they may not fall into the infernal flames. But this is not all, crucified mother. All of your sorrows united to those of Jesus create an echo in your heart and pierce it, not with seven swords, but with thousands and thousands of swords. What is more, since you have come to possess the divine heart of Jesus within you that contains all hearts and whose heartbeats enclose the heartbeats of all, they beat in you and say, Souls, love, and from Jesus' heartbeats that say souls, you feel all sins flow in your heartbeats and you feel yourself die. In the heartbeats that say love, you feel life restored to you. Thus, you alternate continuously between death and life. Crucified Mother, as I look at you, I share in your sorrows how unspeakable they truly are. I long to convert my being into many tongues and voices that offer you compassion. But in the face of the intensity of your sorrows, the offering of my compassion appears as nothing. Therefore, I call upon the angels and the most holy trinity itself, and I implore them to place their joys, harmony 
and beauty around you to comfort you and to assuage your intense sorrows, to sustain you in their arms and to requite all of your sorrows with love. O oh, sorrowful mother, I now wish to thank you in the name of all for everything you have endured for us. I ask you for the sake of your bitter sorrow to come to my assistance at the moment of my death. When I find myself alone and abandoned by all among a thousand anxieties and fears, come then to requite me for the many times in life that I have kept you company. Come to my assistance, place yourself beside me and put the enemy to flight. Wash my soul with your tears, cover me with the precious blood of Jesus. Clothe me with his merits, embellish me and heal me with your sorrows, along with all of Jesus' sorrows and works. By virtue of these, at the moment of my death, make all of my sins disappear and grant me complete forgiveness. And as I breathe my last, receive me into your arms, place me under your mantle, hide me from the enemy's gaze, take me straight to heaven and place me in the arms of Jesus. Let us make this agreement, my dear mother. And now I beseech you to quite the company I have kept you by being present to all those who are in the state of agony. Be a mother to them all, as these are extreme moments and they are in need of great assistance. Do not deny your maternal office to any of them. Let me say one last word as I leave. I beseech you to enclose me in the most sacred heart of Jesus. Watch over me, sorrowful mother. Keep me always enclosed in the divine heart of Jesus, so that I may never leave it, even if I should choose to. O oh, mother, with this prayer, I kiss your hand and ask, for your maternal blessing. Reflections and Practices by Saint Hannibal de Francia Jesus is buried. A stone seals him and prevents his mother from looking at her son any longer. And do we hide from the gazes of others? Are we unaffected when all others forget about us? In holy things, do we remain indifferent with that holy indifference that makes us always obey God's will? In Jesus, total abandonment, do we conquer everything with holy indifference which continuously leads us to him? And do we form with our constancy a sweet chain so as to draw him toward us? Is our gaze immersed in Jesus' gaze, such that when we look, we see only that which Jesus desires? Is our voice immersed in Jesus' voice, such that when we wish to speak, we only speak with Jesus' tongue? Are our steps immersed in Jesus' steps, such that when we walk, we leave only the impressions of Jesus' footsteps in our wake. And is our heart immersed in Jesus' sacred heart to love and desire as his heart loves and desires? My dear mother, when Jesus hides from me for the good of my soul, Grant me the grace you had when you were deprived of Jesus, so that I may give him all the glory you gave him, especially when he was placed in the sepulchre. O oh Jesus, I want to pray to you with your voice, and just as your voice pierced the heavens and resounded in the voices of all, in the same way, honouring your voice, may my voice pierce the heavens to give you the love and the glory of your own word. O oh my Jesus, though my heart continues to beat, I am unsatisfied until you let my heart beat as one with yours. 
for only with your heartbeats will I love as you love. I shall give you the love of all souls, so that one may be the cry of all, love, love. O oh my Jesus, allow yourself the honour of impressing upon everything I do the seal of your own power, love and glory. Thanksgiving after each hour. My beloved Jesus, you have called me in this hour of your passion to keep you company and I have come. With the most touching and eloquent words, I seem to hear you praying, offering reparation, suffering and pleading in anguish and sorrow for the salvation of souls. I tried to follow you in everything. Now I owe you my heartfelt thank you and I bless you. Yes, O oh Jesus, I repeat my thank you thousands and thousands of times. And I bless you for all that you have done and suffered for me and for everyone. I thank you and I bless you for every drop of blood you shed. I thank you for every breath, heartbeat and step. I thank you for all the words, glances, afflictions and affronts you lovingly endured. For everything you did, O oh Jesus, I offer you my thank you and I bless you. O oh my dear Jesus, let my soul send forth a continuous flow of thanksgivings and blessings. May they draw down on all of us the flow of your blessings and graces. O oh my sweet Jesus, press me to your heart and, with your most sacred hands, mark every particle of my being with your I bless you, so that my being may send forth a continuous hymn of blessings to you.